Hey everybody, welcome back to the 90 day recap. Uh, we have single life and we're starting off with Chantel. So this episode, you know, Chantel and her friends are in Greece, I believe, and they're out there for her divorce party from Pedro. And I hate to say, but her friends definitely don't have her best interests, I feel, or they could come across it a little better. So her aunt friend ended up booking her like a trip to an olive garden where they were actually mashing olives, which I kind of thought was interesting because it's very traditional, looked fun. But the guy that you saw, he ended up like hooking them up with some drinks and he was going to end up taking them out and which they did. And right here, you can see Chantel was getting way into it twerking. So right here, they're taking their shots and they're planning on where they're going to go for the night. You know, Chantel, she has been out here trying to find a new boo and she just kind of been a little loose with it. I mean, that's my girl. She did have Drake in her DMs. So she meets this guy at the bar from um the vineyard guy. This is his friend. They're really hitting it off. You know, her friend's behind there for support, which that's what I said. Her friends are always doing too much. For some reason, Chantel feels the need to tell him that she um, is recently divorced, asked if he's married. I don't know why any of that mattered, but they hit it off anyways. Even though he look about like 26, 27, what I notice is they like the boys on here real young. That's all I can say. I like mine a little older. So you see, Santel is way too smitten. She's happy with the night. So she's happy. I'm happy because she went out there to have a good time, take her mind off the drama. So can't really blame her. So right here we have Trey. You already know if you watched last season, he was super crazy. I have to hate to say it. He was kind of obsessed with finding this chick that wasn't his. So he's about to go on a date. Here he says the girl liked him first, which I thought was real interesting because this is the girl. And last see last episode, she did seem like she was real interested, but I think she must have looked him up. Saw he was kind of weird and then decided against it. So he planned a nice date at the Vine House, which I thought was cute. You know, he put in some thought. He brought some flowers and everything. He dressed up. I'm surprised he didn't have a suit and tie on. But um, I actually like Trey. I mean, he might be a 30-year-old version, never kissed a woman. But I think he's genuine and he's just really out here trying. So you can see the chick is already late. She was supposed to be there at 7 o'clock. It's 7.20. I would say by this point, he might as well chalk it up to the game, go to the bar, have a drink, and see what happens. So he's over here looking over his shoulder, waiting for her to pop up, which I'm just going to spoil alert. She never does. But I was really rooting for him when I was watching the show. I was like, bro, please come through for my guy. He's just out here trying to live. So he's still sitting. He actually gives her a lot of time. He waited a whole hour and 10 minutes. I have never seen that in my life. That's what I said. The first 20 minutes, he should have chalked it up to the game. So right here, he looking like his puppy died. He even texted her a couple times. She didn't answer. And she sent him straight to voicemail. So I don't blame him if he looking like his puppy just died. You even got the waitress feeling bad. Said she wish she went on a date with him. I was like, yeah, but if you also remember last season, he was crazy. So, I guess that's what you get. Oh my God, for some reason, I can't remember my girl's name, but I love her. She is so crazy, but I don't know. I like her accent, you know, maybe a little bit of that toxic shit. Something's wrong with me. I don't know. But, oh, Natalie. Okay, so you got Natalie out here. Um, she's over here reconnecting with Josh. She flew out to LA from Florida with her mom, has no plan, and she's pretty much just relying on Josh to figure it out for her when they're not even in an exclusive relationship. So that's hella crazy. She really set herself up for drama. I wanted to say for the okie doke because that's probably what he's going to do to her, unfortunately. I mean, she's probably a freak because she's so crazy. That's why Josh keeps coming around, um, double backing. But at the end of the day, I don't know if he's really interested in pursuing a relationship or interested on just being on TV. So long story short, he's driving her. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, she had to kiss a tree for good luck. I mean, she's kind of quirky and crazy, but I think that's 
will add to her personality. <laughs> so anyways, he drove her to check out an apartment because she was upset the last episode that he was not staying for two weeks, only two days. So they check out apartment, but lo and behold, she can't afford it, which I think is interesting. Like if, oh, and you can see super small, 2100 for a super small area. Sorry for jumping around. So anyways, back to what I'm saying. It's funny that they did not discuss what she could afford before he picked out an apartment for her because they have a whole conversation about she doesn't believe she'll be able to afford it and all that stuff and it's in a nice area. And then I'm like, if you guys are talking, why wouldn't her budget be part of the conversation? So you could see, um, not the real estate agent, but pretty much that. Um, she's speaking with them and saying, well, if you can't afford it, you can pretty much have a co-signer. So here you have Natalie asking Josh to co-sign, which I thought she was jumping the gun because at the end of the day, there is no way he was about to put his name on that line. Like, and Natalie, she kind of bipolar up and down. So that could go either way. So right here, she's telling him, I came to your country, all this stuff, pretty much you owe me. And I'm like, no, you came here for Michael. Okay, so my girl Veronica, she's a hot ass mess this season. Super hot mess. So if you guys remember Kim, she's messing with his son. Um, I guess she's done with the guy from last season, which she slept with him and he had a whole herpy breakout, which was insane to me. But each its own, I guess. Anyways, back to these two. So I can't remember his name, but she is having a situation with him. Mind you, he's only 27. She's 36. I'm like, girl, nine year difference. That's insane. But I guess if he's laying the pipe and he's cooking you breakfast, that's all you need. That's all she's really looking for. Because I'm like, by this big age, girl, you should not be sleeping with somebody's little brother. Like, 27 is grown, but at the end of the day, he does not have his shit together whatsoever. And I'm like, I'm not surprised he's Kim's son doesn't have his shit together, going through shit just like his mom was. So they were talking about he doesn't communicate, so he's trying to show up for her. She's over here sad, crying over this kid. Um, You have Tim over here trying to knock some sense into her because he doesn't, that dude doesn't even have a job, nor does he have his own place. And she's over here arguing like, well, you date women that don't have a job or own their own place. And Tim's like, well, that's the difference because I'm going to take care of him. You're not going to take care of him. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, I knew how to be something because he's cute. So why is he messing with a 40 year old woman? So they end up going out to like meet and greet a little um, speed dater thing. Tim finds this chick that he was actually talking to online, which I was surprised because she was actually pretty cute. I'm surprised Tim hasn't came out of the closet yet. You know, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but whatever. So the girl that he meets, she's actually super cute. She was nice. She was flirty. I was super surprised. She kind of looked like she was into it. But for the show, I always feel like people are nice. Um, He did get her number, and I just want to put this up here. Deb actually comes back next episode, and she lying about her age and all that. I'm like, girl, go ahead and get it how you live. Once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, Make sure you're here for tomorrow's episode. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe and like.